Hey everybody, how's it going? I am here to talk about one of the most anticipated films of the year. Klaus. 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 Yeah. Or Claus. Ooh. No, it's Klaus. So the movie came out yesterday on Netflix and it was very good. Incredibly good. But I'll talk about that in detail here in a bit, both with like the story and the animation. But yeah, Klaus has been a thing people have been talking about for quite some time now. I recall seeing like test animations for this back in 2015 and how people were hopeful that this film would be completed since it was a return to traditional animation. Ah, uh, 2D, we missed you. But Klaus wasn't just 2D. There's something different here with the lighting and the texturing and the way they composite their shots. But I'll talk about that here in a bit. They're not attached. Why aren't they attached? I thought they were attached. I would never in a million years have done what I just did if I didn't think these were attached. So who are the people behind this film? Well, the director and the creator is Sergio Pueblos. Sergio Pueblos? Pueblos? Forgive me, I, I suck at saying names. Well, Sergio here is an old school animator from Disney. He did animation for The Hunchback, Tarzan, Treasure Planet, and Hercules. He's also the guy who created Despicable Me and Smallfoot. Like, that caught me off guard. I was like, whoa, you did Despicable Me? You made that? See, Klaus was his way of making up for minions. We have to maintain order in this world, balance the good with the bad. But Sergio's goal was to bring back traditional animation, to see 2D return, but with a mixture of 3D involved as well. He even launched his own animation studio in Madrid, Spain called Spa Animation, so he could accomplish this goal. Now, this was a long journey, because like I said, I heard chatter about this movie back in 2015, but it went through shopping and production hell. All these companies and distributors were like, nope, not gonna touch this. Way too expensive and way too risky. But thank God for Netflix. I know we joke on them for green lighting everything, but in this regard, I'm glad that it happened. Netflix, you're greenlit. And it turned out great. This movie had so much hype leading up to it that I was kind of afraid that it couldn't live up to it. As in the bar is set so high, how could it possibly reach it? Well, it did. From an animation point of view, it knocked it out of the park. And I heard that Netflix actually might campaign for this movie and try to get it nominated for Best Animated Picture at the Oscars, which I fully support. I think that's a smart move. All right, so let's talk about the story. Here is my synopsis. Forgive me if I leave anything out. And also uh, a warning for spoilers. I, I might hit a few here and there. So the movie's about Jesper, our postman who is lazy and reminds me a hell of a lot of Cusco. He's like in his 20s, he's pampered, he's spoiled, and his father, who's the postmaster, is like, that's it, I'm sending you way up far north where you have to run the post office and get things operating in a year or you're out of here. You're gonna lose your inheritance, gonna lose your silk bed sheets. So Jesper arrives, and discovers that the town is absolutely horrible with these two families who are at war with one another, kind of like the Hatfields and the McCoys. We meet other characters like the leaders of these different families, the teacher, the captain, Klaus himself. But on accident, Jesper discovers that these kids are sending letters to Klaus not sitting letters, it's it's kind of hard to explain. I'd rather not get into too much detail. Basically what I'm trying to say for the synopsis is that through this convoluted uh, accident, Jesper discovers that the kids want to send letters and get toys from Klaus. That's Jesper's way of filling his quota and through the process of him trying to get off the island, he actually gets fulfilled working with Klaus, delivering toys to this town. The town starts to chill out and then it leads to some climactic part of the movie, which I'll discuss here in a bit. But it, this, this movie is basically laying down the framework for the Santa Claus lore, <laughs> the expanded Santa Claus cinematic universe which began with Tim Allen. <laughs> there was never a time in this movie where I was bored. I was hooked the entire way through. The story itself is pretty basic, but fun. It, it, it excels in its simplicity. 
Uh, two families are angry. Got this boy who wants to leave and be done with the town that he's in. A story about Klaus and how he lost someone near to him and how the toys are his way of coping with it. Uh, I, I like it. There there's simple stories that we've seen before, but it's being done well. So that's what's most important to me. The characters are fun, they are likable, they're interesting, the personalities fit the character designs, and I laughed a lot more at this movie than I expected. Like there's this one particular scene where it's like Jesper is a drug dealer, but with toys, and that really got me. I laughed out loud hard at that part. Hey, you want a toy? I got your toy right here. I'm your toy dealer. I also really appreciate how they tie in the Santa lore into this movie. As in, uh, the elves, the sleigh, the reindeer, the chimney, the cookies, every single part of what makes Santa and like our modern eyes, they explain in this movie how the traditions were inexplicably launched. Like it was just by happenstance that some of this stuff occurred and then became tradition. I thought that was cute and clever. Now the dialogue is not bad, I'd say. It feels modern. God, I'm trying to figure out how I can really describe this. It feels like it's very quick-witted, clever writing, kind of like The Emperor's New Groove, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's, it's very sharp dialogue, which at times feels like it doesn't make sense with the setting that it's in, with being like an old town of people and what I suspect is like 18 or 1700s people. All I'm saying is the dialogue is not bad, it's just different, but still fun. Overall, it's a wonderful story and it works. The voice acting was also really good. You got like Rashida Jones, JK Simmons, who's like one of my favorite voice actors ever. Are you rushing or are you dragging? <laughs> Uh, he, he has a scary voice when he gets angry. Rushing or dragging. Rushing. So you do know the difference. Now, some of the voices seem kind of bizarre coming out of their characters' mouths. Like, I know that's kind of a weird thing to say. For, for the old lady, I kind of thought her voice would be a bit more, I don't know, just old. Like, she looks like, uh, funny enough, another Emperor's New Groove reference. She looks like Yzma but her voice sounds a bit young for her character. I wouldn't even call it a complaint, just an observation. I think it was Joan Cusack who voiced her. I, I don't know. And I'm too lazy to find out right now in the recording booth, apparently. But for the main characters, for Jesper, for the teacher, whose name I forget at the moment, for Klaus, great voice acting. And I really appreciate that they have kid voice actors for the children. That adds an extra layer of cute to it. And I like that. That's good, right? Please don't put me on the naughty list. Now, I do have two criticisms from a story and music point of view. So the orchestral music was very good. I loved it. But there were parts where they had like lyrical music and it seemed like it was a very modern music and I, it took me out of the movie a bit. Now, again, it's not inappropriate or bad. I just, I'm not really a fan of lyrical music when it seems, I don't know, again, modern. It, it seems like it's a way to date the movie. Um, maybe I'm just biased towards orchestral music. Now, with the story itself, and again, spoilers, there's the scene where they reveal to Klaus and the teacher and the <laughs> uh, uh, Inuit elves, I guess what that's what they are. They discover that Jesper had this plan the entire time to do these letters so he can raise his funds and get out of town. That to me seemed kind of tropey. It's the entire thing of like, oh, here's my original plan, but things changed. Oh, please come back. It's not what you think. That, that gets tropey to me. And I thought that there would be a bit more of a climactic reason why the town would turn on Jesper. But uh, once more, it's not bad. It just feels kind of like a tired trope and I was hoping for a bit more. Uh, not bad, not poorly executed, just a trope that I'm, I'm I, I get bored with. So, hey, maybe again, I'm just being biased and other people feel differently. I didn't think so. Now the animation, the true star of the movie. I have no complaints, none. It's, it's all great, all of it. The designs, the movement, the textures, the lighting. Oh my God, the lighting, it's groundbreaking. The techniques they deploy in this movie, 
I, I can't even wrap my mind around it. Like I'm doing my homework and my research and I'm still kind of flabbergasted at what they pulled off. Let me go down my list of things in particular I like about the animation. Great designs that are stylized. They're cartoony, but like not too over the top cartoony. And you got these very animated expressions to match. There's also some really good physical comedy bits, like the sleigh chase at the end. I love that, that was fun. And the shots, oh my God. Uh, the way that they frame some of these shots, especially when they reveal a new setting with like Klaus's forest or the town or from the mountains and the hilltops. Ooh, man, that is wallpaper worthy right there, my friend. But outside of like, of course, the frame by frame traditional animation, two of the main champs in this movie are the lighting and the texturing. The way they bring it all together is just magnificent. It's the best thing I've seen all year. And that's saying something when you've got things like green eggs and ham and primal. I still can't understand it. There's an article on beforesandafters.com where they interviewed Pueblos. Pueblos, Pueblos? I'm so sorry, dude. I can't say your name, I suck. But he did a step-by-step -step process of how they made the movie from a visual point of view and I highly recommend you checking out the article. Like, I would try to explain it, but at this point, I admit that I don't really understand it 100% yet, and I don't want to confuse you all or give out misinformation. All I know is that it was groundbreaking, the way they combine the texturing and the lighting and lead into compositing. It's amazing, I, I love it. They set out to do something different and they totally accomplished it. And I hope to see more movies copy the style. For all we know, this could be the ticket to the return of 2D animation. So overall, this was a fantastic movie, and it totally lives up to the hype. I highly recommend it, it's on Netflix, and it was just overall a fantastic film. You know, with these streaming wars starting to heat up, I kind of see this as a good thing for animation. Like between Warner Brothers doing their Looney Tunes thing, and you got like Netflix funding Green Eggs and Ham, and Klaus, I just hope to see these companies compete, and through that competition, we see more funding going towards animation. Bring it on. I want to see more. Keep it up. I want to see this competition lead to amazing things. Because so far, this year, it's been pretty damn good. So yeah, those are my thoughts about Klaus. Tell me what you all think in the comments. Check out the movie, and I will see you all next time. Bye.